Excuse the red face. Yesterday we were in the sun the whole day. I got toasted. I'm not cooked. <laughs> anyway, guys, welcome to another video where we are going to work with our HP Tuners tool. We're basically going to set up the whole data logging system and I'm going to tell you guys and show you guys what I'm going to do. Um, so we're basically going to go from scratch. We're going to add channels, add per, all the different kind of sensors, actual values, specified values, and etc. and etc. So anyway, let's get into the car and let's get started. Okay, so we are in the car, let's get started. So this video I'm gonna break up into multiple videos. VCM scanner is just so big and I wanna make it make the videos a little bit shorter for you guys. It's not gonna be as short, uh, but I'm gonna try my ultimate best because I just love to explain everything to people, make sure they do understand what's going on. So anyway, uh, at this moment you want to turn your ignition on and you want to plug in your MPVI tool if you have HP tuners. Alright, so anyway, we're going to go into VCM scanner. You're going to be thrown with all of this information over here. When you look at it, you're like, whoa, what the heck? There's so many things to look at. You don't know where to start at. That's why I'm going to say I'm going to break this video down into simple, shorter videos than making one massive video for this entire thing. So basically, you're on the left is you're under channels. This block over here is the only block we're going to focus on today. Yeah, you probably think that, okay, that this video shouldn't be long. It can turn out to be pretty darn long. <laughs> all right, so basically, you guys can see all of these things. Summing, advanced, intake, air temperature, mass, airflow. All of this, if you click here on the file and you go to load SAE, um, is there even load vehicle defaults? Let's even go to load vehicle defaults. There's even less things now. And I mean, like... Over here, is there anything about the turbo wastegate, um, the duty cycle of it? There's absolutely nothing. I mean, going to maybe a normal aspirated vehicle and just plugging it in, you might actually know more about the car, but because this is a turbo car, you know less. So this means we have got to add a bunch of values. So before we even get started, the first thing we're going to do is go to this car over here. Once again, my uh, vehicle's ignition is on. Remember, you can do it two ways vehicle off of ignition on and vehicle idling and also driving like vehicle in motion basically so we're only got our ignition on and vehicle off so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here to this blue car we're gonna connect so over here as you can see is gathering vehicle information and all that stuff so basically what it's doing is it's going through all the available sensors in your car and it's adding it all over here to these to this gear basically as Basically, this is like to add a channel. So over here, you can see we've got a lot of things to choose from. We'll go through that now. Before we do that, what I want to do quickly is, is I want to click on this red button over here. So it starts scanning. So basically, now it's going through the information, which is here already listed. So you can see the engine is off. RPMs is zero. We're not moving at all. Our engine coolant is at 42 degrees Celsius. Our intake air temp is at 24 degrees Celsius. So, so um, and kind of interesting if we look here at the bottom you can see ambient air temperature is at 13 degrees Celsius uh, so basically I did idle the car for a little bit because it's the second time I'm trying to make this video the first time was just way too long so obviously the heat is under the engine bay and it's heating up the sensors and all of that kind of stuff so what we're gonna do is let's quickly start a car there we go now you guys can see the RPMs is dropping is because the call start was already passed so it should stop around 750 RPMs let's give it a second 750 760 750 760 all right going over to all the other things you can see the engine coolant temp you can see the manifold absolute pressures pressure is 31 kPa and it just goes on and on here is our control module voltage, which is basically our voltage to our battery. And then, oh no, 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 sorry, this is the control module. This is the uh, ECM, the engine control module voltage, sorry. And then our absolute load and all of that kind of thing. So what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly press stop. We're going to turn our car off. We don't have to turn it on again. Literally, here's the key. Let me just show you guys. Okay, so basically when you did say connect to the car we can even like disconnect if we want to we can just leave it like that so basically what happens is when you try to connect to your car the uh, scanner tool is looked overlooked like all your overlooked at all your sensors so it knows exactly what sensors your car has basically keeping your ignition on now it's just going to run your battery flat so once again here's my key 
Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to this gear here uh, with the plus, it says add channel. So we're gonna go and add a lot of channels. So unlike VCDS, with HP tuners, you can add as much channels as you want. It's actually so freaking cool. All right, so there is two categories to choose from. We got our ECM, engine control module, and our external inputs. What we're gonna do is we're gonna close our external inputs because we're not gonna use that. That is basically if you've got added stuff. Let me quickly just open and show you guys like, over here is AEM stuff, AEM X-Series boost gauge, your oil fuel pressure gauge, and going over here we've got Bosch, um, our, our LT2 support with our EQ ratios and stuff. So, and also for the MPVIs, you can also get stuff for like the ProLink, ProLink Plus. I think that has to do with the um, oxygen sensor you put at your exhaust that you can plug directly into your MPVI tool. Okay, so we're only going to concentrate on the ECM. So this is going to go completely personal to what you want to add to your data logs, right? Uh, there's things that I'm going to add that you can't add. There's things that you're going to add that I can't add. And there's things that you're going to think that I'm adding unnecessarily and things that I should add. It's all up to you. So for now, I'm going to... <clears throat> I'm going to add all the things that I think is going to be relevant for what I'm going to do soon or what I'm looking at. So once again, my way is not the right way. There is no wrong way unless you basically have no data there. <laughs> okay, going to our engine, we're going to, this is basically everything to do with the engine. <clears throat> So what we're going to do is we're going to click on general and we're going to have a look over here. So here we got engine RPMs, which we already actually saw. We got our engine coolant temperature. We got our radiator coolant temperature. So it's actually a pretty interesting fact. Why would there be an engine radiator temperature? Shouldn't that temperature be the same as your coolant temperature? Or maybe the temperature in your radiator is less than your coolant temperature. So you can actually see how it's trying to cool down and get heated up by the engine. Pretty interesting. You see, like these are the kind of things that if you are struggling with your car overheating or having water issues that is hot or whatever the case is, uh, you can go and add something, add something like that. But for now, I'm gonna leave it. One thing I am gonna add is the engine oil temp sensor. So all I did was is I double clicked on it. Clicking quickly on the other one, you guys can see it was white and it turned blue. So when it's blue, uh, light blue like that, it means that it is selected. Going to our runtime since engine start, I'm not really interested in that. Uh, going to our load and torque. So this is basically our absolute uh, load, our calculated engine load. But what I really want is I actually want our clutch torque. I mean, I mean that's kind of pretty cool. And then here is also our desired load. So basically, this is our absolute is how much load we have and then how much we desire at the end of the day. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to click on that. So obviously if you see your absolute load is 80% and your desired is 40%, clearly it states something that something is somewhere wrong, if it makes any sense. <clears throat> okay. Going over to our torque request and management over here, we got our cruise control, brake torque. I'm, I'm not concerned about our torque when cruising around <laughs> on using our cruise control. Um, desired wheel torque, see that is pretty cool, like, that, that I kind of like. We're going to double click on it, it's going to turn blue. We got our alternator desired torque, don't care about it. Um, set path to desired torque, don't care. TC is like basically traction control desired torque if I'm not mistaken. And our ESP desired torque. So for now, we're going to leave that. We're going to go to idle. So this is our idle desired R RPMs. So this is just a great indication. I'm going to choose that. This is just a great indication to see that uh, our car is idling at a thousand RPMs, but the, uh, the, the desired torque, um, the, the desired RPMs is basically 750, then you know, whoa, I'm way above my idling of where I'm supposed to be. <clears throat> so then obviously you, you'll actually know that, oh, something is wrong. We're going to go and minimize that. We're going to go to accelerator and throttle. So let's say, let's say quickly you have added one value. So let's say we go to, let's say we actually want to remove a value. What we're going to do is let's just quickly close this. You're going to go to like that desired idle RPM. You're going to right click on it and right over here you can see remove channel. You can even go and remove all the channels if you want to. 
Okay, so at this point now, I've edited all the values that I wanted. So I did not add so much more, there was just a few things. Anyway, once again, there is no wrong, there is no right. Um, if you want to see everything, you can just pause the video and here I'm scrolling through all my BA things that I've added. I know some people will also like to add the same values to their cars. So, and there we go. So anyway, let's quickly go back. So, oh yeah, here it is. So we're quickly going to go and turn the ignition on. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're still connected to the car. We can disconnect if we want. We can connect again if we want. Um, basically, the ignition is on. It will connect. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the car up. Perfect. Once again, don't forget uh, if it doesn't show any values is because you have not clicked the red dot before already. All right, so going over here, you guys can see our RPMs is dropping. Here's our engine oil temp is at 48 degrees Celsius. Desired wheel torque at this moment is minus 40 newton meters. Um, that, that, that means it's really in neutral, like really, really neutral. <laughs> going to our retard, as you guys can see over here, there is basically no retard as yet. Our actual lambda, actual lambda is at one. Let's rev it up a bit. We went to 0.99. So it's kind of like fluctuating, but very, very like now, what is that? That's basically like no fluctuation, which is actually very good. Going over to our short term, um, short term fuel trims, as you guys can see, we're actually running 1% more fuel um, than because zero is like optimum. And then our exhaust gas temperature, as you guys can see, is actually like freaking climbing. It's 122, 125, 128. So what we're going to do now is we're going to basically stop it and we're going to turn our ignition off and here's our key once again. So now the next thing I want to talk to you guys is basically um, to, as you guys can see now, this is just chaos. It's absolutely chaos. There's so many things to look at here. What I like to do is I'm, I, I like to sort things out in categories, right? So let's say, for example, here's our misfires. So number one, two, three, four, and total misfires. What I will do is I will actually try to get them into their own die, like into their own little block. And when I talk about that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on cylinder number one, two. Also, what I'm doing is I'm holding in control to select them, three, four, and total misfires. It will be pretty cool to have like our total misfires separate from all the other data. It's just making it easier to see it, find it, and just easier in general. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold in control and use the arrow down. As you guys can see, it's moving down. We're going to basically take it all the way to the bottom and you can actually go further than the bottom. And that's actually just going to add uh, more spaces in between them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it down a little bit. So there we go. So we've got these added spaces here now. Uh, we can actually take it up as well if we want to. So, but once again, we'll sort everything out as we go. We don't have to have everything spot on from the start. So what we're going to do next now is, is let's actually go all the way up. We're going to go to our engine RPMs and we're going to go to our, let's say, desired load desire let's see what else there is or wait, wait, let's actually go quickly i just want to keep this part as simple as possible we're not going to do everything it's just to give you guys an idea so let's talk about spark retard uh we can take the spark retard by itself um and move it down but also what we can do is there's another one over here let's see timing advance so what i'm going to do with the spark retard is i'm not just going to say retard in its own category i'm going to try to like fill up as much stuff as i can with it so when you talk about spark if it's retarding or advancing we can actually see by how much so i can either bring all four of those down or i can take this one up first and we're going to put it above the timing advance and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and select it one two three four five we're going to hold in control again we're going to move all of them down Let's continue moving it. Actually, what I want to do as well is just want to drag this down so I can see how far I still got to go. Uh, I thought it was going to stay up. Anyway, so there we can see at the bottom is misfire current cylinder number four. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go one up. There we go. So if we click over here now, you guys can see they are basically separated now. You can see everything of this category over here is timing, re timing related. 
anything in this category is misfire uh, related so basically by doing that you can literally see easier okay let's quickly go and have a look um, for example then you can go back you can have a look and see if it's better or worse or whatever the case is so anyway you're just gonna go and do it of everything like put your fuel together put your turbo stuff together put your uh, just continue going like all of that until you basically have everything done so what I'm gonna do is I'm quickly gonna do it and then I'll be back right now all right, so I am done. Literally, it took me probably 20 to 30 minutes. This is, this is actually a lot of admin work to it. But once you have done it and you're happy with it, you can literally, um, let's see, is it this one? No, you can literally come to the save channel configuration as. You can click on it and you can call it whatever you want. So as you guys can see, I did do an Audi A4 one. I did do an ST one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually rename the Audi A4 one. I never went so much into depth. There was still me practicing, learning and all of that. So now I'm currently happy with it. And do you want to? Yes, I want to. All right. So here we go. Let me quickly show you guys what I've done to give you an idea. So basically the first few things, it just gives me an idea of the channel. Um, oh, sorry, of the log. Like what is our engine RPMs at? Are we like idling or are we starting to accelerate and etc. We've got our desired, um, RPM idle desired RPM so it's just to see that when we are idling is everything okay it's not really necessary but I mean like if once again if your car is idling at a thousand RPMs and your request your desired is 720 or 750 you know actually there is a problem so it's just it's some extra information I mean we've got it we can use it why not We've got our vehicle speed, so we can see what our speed was at that moment. And we have our mass airflow to see just how much airflow it's uh, sucking into the car. Just to let you guys know, if you right click on it, you can go to units and you can literally change this as you want. I've got mine on grams per second. Going over to our turbo, this is our wastegate duty cycle. So basically, um, these things are <clears throat> these things are just showing you how the car is at that moment. This category over here is our turbo category. And then the next one is our fuel category. <clears throat> Going to the next one, this is our timing category, our misfire category, our cam desired intake, cam desired angles. And this is basically our miscellaneous, like our fan duty cycle, our control module voltage, see how much our alternator is charging and all of that. This is our port flaps. Then we've got like our load and our torque basically over here. Basically, I'll still maybe take the load up to the top. We'll see. I'll, I'll just like data log and I'll, I'll fine tune as we go. But as is already got an understanding of where everything is. And this is our acceleration positions. I might even take some of them up as well to this top pod here from by the engine. So basically the reason for doing all of this kind of things, as I told you guys, a lot of admin works, a lot of work to actually put in, but it gives you literally that thing of, okay, I did my log. I want to go see how my misfires was. <clears throat> you go down to your misfire section. Oh, here's the misfires, total misfire is zero. And if there was a misfire, you'll see. Cylinder, cylinder number one had nothing, number two had nothing, number three had nothing, number four had a hundred. You know cylinder number four is a problem then. Going over to, wow, the car actually did good. How many uh, ignition retardation was there? So you can have a look there. How was my boost doing? How was my fuel doing? So it's just to easy categorize to go and do everything, like see everything so much easier. And that is where people, by, by just looking at it, you see people go and see, oh, this is a problem, this, 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 because they already got their layout. They already know, <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry, they already know exactly everything, what is going on here because they have laid it out in the way they understand it. So basically, yeah. So let's quickly go and start a car up. Okay, as you guys can see, it's asking for 740 RPMs. It just drops like that. It's actually so freaking cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to accelerate a little bit. Just get the RPMs up. We got it to 4,000 RPMs there. Let's go again. All right. So we went to 4,000 RPMs twice there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press stop and we're going to switch the car off. Here's the key again. This is so freaking cool. Do that with VCDS. You can't do that. I just gotta like brag. Here's the key in my hand. Throw it out of the window. No, rather not. <laughs> All right. So now what I want you guys to see is, you see here at the bottom, we're basically almost done with the video. I just want to show you guys quickly something. So here at the bottom, we've got this red line running here. You can see it goes up once, 
and goes up a second time. That's basically when we uh, put our fruit on throttle, so showing our RPM. So basically, this entire line here at the bottom, that's the area we recorded just now. So we're going to go over here. So as you guys can see, this part actually moves around. You can see in this entire dialogue how things are changing and the RPMs are going up here. But I don't want you guys to please focus on anything on the right. Just focus on everything on the left, uh, just to show you guys how everything is. So we're going to look at our engine RPMs. It was six, uh, 700 RPMs. We accelerated, it kept going up. Goodness, 2,000, 3,000. And obviously you can go like fine tuning. So we basically went to 3,000, what is this? This is basically our high is that this is our highest 3754 rpms here we can see our idle <laughs> desired rpms which is not was not valid at this moment you can see we're standing still you can see this is how much air the car was sucking in at that moment in grams per second our duty uh, turbo wastegate is 1.6 so that's basically shut when it's 100 percent that's how it's opening so our wastegate was shut over here this is our exhaust gas temperature is 30 so once again i just started the car the exhaust temperature does go down really quick even if you just idle it let's say let's quickly go to the second log you guys can see when we went to the second 4000 rpms we're already at 52 degrees celsius so um, looking at over everything we can we can even go here to our let's say i want to see our timing so here's our timing let's have a look so when we reached up here we went to for 30 degrees timing if we go a little bit lower it was even higher where is that i could have sworn i saw like a 40 somewhere which that's ridiculous that's bonkers 28 30. so basically the car went up to like oh there we go 41 degrees that, that's bonkers that's a lot so anyway as you guys can see we never had any retard if we go to the second log we went up we never had any retard this is literally only the one misfire there maybe if we clear uh clean like clear the codes we'll be able we'll be able to get it back down to zero so anyway without talking much more you guys can basically go through everything here and see how everything is and it's quicker for you to understand and all of that so there we go, we talked about channels, oh my gosh, I've been sitting in this car for like an hour. It's a good thing it's not such a hot day today, so yeah, we talked about everything from the channel side. I do hope I explained it clearly to you guys, once again, you can literally, if you want to change your manifold, absolute pressure, as you guys can see, mine's in bar. If you want to change the unit, you can change it to uh, PSI. NHG, MPA, KPA, PA, MMHG. I do hope that this helped everyone out to understand this section. Uh, we're going to do the other sections in the future as well. Like I'm saying, I have to customize all of this anyway for me to understand it better. So why not just make a video of it and learn you guys as I'm also learning and getting everything to the desired uh, specs to what I really want. Anyway, guys, we're going to drop this video right over here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see all of you freaking legends in the next video. But for now, peace out.